In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the Keywords Everywhere tool. I call it Keywords Anywhere most of the time, and I use it to find keywords for my blog posts and my YouTube videos. I'm going to show you how to use it. It's really simple, but really powerful, and it's free. It's a Chrome extension. I'm going to show you how it all works starting right now. If you've been watching my videos for some time, you've probably noticed on Google search pages and other websites that I have these keyword volume and CPC and competition numbers show up under the search bar on the right hand side at the very bottom of the page beside suggested terms or related terms. And that is using the tool I'm gonna to show you right now, which is Keywords Anywhere. It is a Chrome extension that you can add to the Chrome browser. Just go to the Chrome store, search for Keywords Everywhere. I said Keywords Anywhere a moment ago, but it's Keywords Everywhere. And then this will pop up. You gotta click on the Add to Chrome button, which would be here for you. I have rated it because I already have it installed. Or click on the tile so you can see more information about it. And once you have it installed, you do have to set up a free API key. So if you go to the icon, which is this K, go to the icon, click on update settings, and then click on get free API key, and then fill in your email address. Check these two boxes, click on email me, my API key. You'll receive an email that looks a lot like this. Your keywords everywhere API key, click on this first link, and then your API key is right here. Copy that, go back into the options page, paste it in here, click on validate, and now we have a new API key. And the reason they have API keys is because there are some individuals in the past who would abuse the system and just send automated requests to it and just bombard their servers and they basically ruined it for everybody. So now we have to have API keys. So if they find that somebody is sending automated requests, they can just shut down the one API key and problem solved. If you found this video useful so far, please consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below or get on the private Facebook group where we talk WordPress all day long. There's a link for that in the description down below. So now that we have this installed, some important stuff to notice. I'm gonna close some tabs here first. Too many tabs. So we have the hockey stick search we had up here and the search volume data. And that's great in Google search, it's very, very helpful. You can also find that data on YouTube and all of these places that I can't currently highlight with my cursor. Google search has them, Google search widgets, Google analytics, Google search console, Google trends, Google keyword planner, YouTube, Bing search, Amazon, eBay, answer the public, solve or solve or suval, I don't know how that's pronounced, keyword shifter, no, nope. keyword shitter, that's a pleasant name. Majestic, Moz, Etsy. All these places will have the keyword, volume, cost per click, and competition highlighted when you search for keywords and any suggested keywords that appear on the page. You can turn various things off. So you don't, if you wanna show only the volume, just uncheck these and you get just the volume. I always have all the rest checked because it doesn't take any more effort. And the CPC I find very important because if a keyword has search volume, but nobody's bidding on it. It's either a keyword that has commercial value but nobody's ever noticed, or it's a keyword that has no commercial value, otherwise people will be bidding on it using the cost per click. This is Google AdWords, so when you see, or Google Ads, sorry, when you see an ad popping up on the side of the search, which we don't on this page anywhere. Let's try a different search. And here we have some ads showing up. This little ad icon denotes the ad, and those are people who are paying to show up on this page for this search term because there is commercial value to it, otherwise they wouldn't be paying for the ads. So that's why I keep that on. So if people are paying for the ads, you can assume that there's some commercial value to that search term, and likely you're doing keyword research to create a blog post or some kind of other content with the intent of making some kind of return on it. So if you're only using keywords that have no commercial value, you're not gonna get a lot of return on it. So that's why I keep my CPC on. So other pretty cool things, when you search in here and you have the autocomplete, which is these keywords here, the keyword search volume will be popped in there. Pretty straightforward. And something I usually do with my current level of website is I wanna highlight my volume when there's more than a thousand search volume for the month. I don't highlight the other ones, so I don't worry about those. But if we highlight that, and then we come out here, refresh this page. We now have highlighted in green all the terms that are more than 1,000 searches per month. 
And when I first started out, when I first started my website, I wasn't targeting search terms over a thousand a month because my site didn't have the authority to rank for them. But now it does, so now I search for higher volume keywords. Maybe one day I can go for the super competitive 60,000 searches a month, but not right now because I want every page to rank. Like you can, you can throw Hail Marys and sometimes you'll create a post that ranks on the first page for a super, super competitive, super high traffic search term, but that doesn't really happen a lot. So I wanna to try to rank every page for the keywords I wanna rank them for. And so I make sure that my search volume and my competition is at a certain level so that I can actually rank for those. Another cool feature, if you're doing keyword research and you're running through all kinds of keywords, it's hard to keep track of them in your head. So you either write them down or you paste them into a notepad or something, or with keywords everywhere, you can check the stars, not check them, but click on the stars, click on any random stars we feel like. And then even if we go into a search result and then press back, we have a related searches box show up. And that one does not have keywords anywhere in it, but we could just copy this, refurbish hockey sticks, if I can copy it. I cannot, so I'm gonna type in refurbished hockey sticks, see if that's anything worthwhile. 200 searches a month is better than nothing. When you're starting out, when you're first starting out, that's a good search term to target that lower volume, lower competition, more likely you're gonna rank for it with a new website. But once we have all these keywords checked, all the ones we wanna check, go back to Keywords Anywhere, click on My Favorite Keywords, and we have a list of all the keywords that we just checked. So then we can further analyze them and pick ones we want, even ex export them to Excel or CSV so we can data crunch them a little bit. Another option you have is this Add All Keywords button on the very bottom right corner. If we click on that, every keyword will have a star. And if we come in here, refresh our favorites, we now have every keyword from that page. And you could do this, you could go and, and just go through the entire gamut of hockey stick related search terms, add them all to Keywords Anywhere, export them all to Excel, make some pivot tables, do some fancy stuff in Excel, and find the keywords that you like to target for your next blog post. And that way you'll have a very complete set of data to work with and more likely to find some great keywords you can rank for. And speaking of competition, a quick tip. If we search for hockey sticks and then we press Control or Command F and search for hockey sticks, our exact search term, we can see, we can just eyeball how competitive a search term is. We have this number as well, competition of one, which is the maximum. But if we wanna just confirm how competitive it is, we can do that. We can search for hockey sticks and we can see hockey sticks the exact search term appearing in every single one of the titles on the homepage, every single one of the meta descriptions. Nobody has it in the URL. This guy has it in the URL, it's not highlighted. Let's check URLs. So it's in every title, every description, and half the URLs have hockey sticks. That means all of these sites are actively optimizing for this search term. And if we search for, let's uh, look for Hockey sticks on sale. I'm gonna copy that search term, paste it in here. Now we have zero. Zero of the search results have hockey sticks on sale in the title or the description, which means nobody's optimizing actively for this term. These sites below the ads are ranking because they are likely authority sites in the, in the market and nobody else is actively trying to optimize for it. And this, these are pages where you're gonna see, um, not always, but sometimes you're gonna see sites like Quora, Yahoo Answers, uh, various forums from around the internet that don't have any real ranking power for individual pages. They just rank based on how authoritative that site is. And if they even mention hockey sticks on sale anywhere, anywhere on the site, they rank it in the first page because they need something there. So this is the search term that's not highly optimized for this keyword. If I was in this market, I might make a blog post on this or do some more research and find some other related keywords. But this might be a good search term to target compared to the last one we saw, which was hockey sticks, where everybody has hockey sticks in the title, in the description, and half of them have it in the URL. They're actively doing SEO. But I digress. This tutorial is about keywords everywhere. I use it 
every single day, pretty much, because it always pops up. So I don't even think I don't have to think about doing keyword research. I'll just be going about my daily life online, and I'll see search volume. Like, oh, that's a interesting keyword. I never thought of that. And then I just save it somewhere, usually in a G sheet. But that's how I use it, and I use it every single day. If you use keywords everywhere in a different way or unique way that I didn't cover here, let us know in the comments down below. Or if you have any must-have SEO tools or things like that, let us know. We'd all love to know what they are. Even if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or in the private Facebook group. There's a link to it in the description down below. And make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on your screen so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.